Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be doing another what if video and that being what if Jupiter's moons orbited the earth so I've seen comments on this one um, um, a lot in the past and yeah I never got around to doing it so today we're finally making it a reality and we're going to do it so I could already probably just guess from this that this is uh, going to cause a lot of chaos in the inner solar system because these moons Obviously, a lot of them are really a past Callisto around Jupiter. A lot of those moons are really far away from Jupiter. So we know the sun is probably going to steal a lot of them from the Earth in the first place. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get this experiment started. So what we need to actually do first is we need to replace the Earth with Jupiter so we can actually add the moons. So we're going to replace Earth. So then we're going to select Jupiter. Okay, so there's Jupiter. Then all we need to simply do here is add the moons... Uh, like so so there they all are okay and then we need to replace Jupiter again with the earth simple as that so earth okay right so earth here you go buddy right so this is the earth with all of the moons of Jupiter around it so you can see Europa's there there's Io uh, that's Ganymede and then Callisto should be visible as well where's Callisto is that it there? no it's Venus Where's, where's Callisto? Uh, Callisto? Uh, labels. Callisto is always a little harder to spot because it is considerably further. Ah, there it is. Okay. So, quite hard to see, but it is there in the distance. So, even from Earth, you can see Callisto. There's also another little moon there as well. But yeah, there you go. So, that's the Galilean moons around the Earth. So, what we'll do is, uh, without further ado, we also need to press play. So, we're going to slow down time. So we can watch it all unfold. Because we know we can tell straight away at the sun. Look, I mean, look, some of these almost go to the orbit of Venus. There's no way the Earth's going to hold on to those. So it's going to be really crazy to play. Okay, there you go. Right. So how's this going to work? So it looks like... Are they already all broken away from the Earth? Let's see. Oh, orbits are switched on. Oh, my God. Okay, that's pretty insane. I'm not sure if they've actually registered to the Earth, though. Let's just, I just want to try that again, actually. I just want to see. Because they didn't, they just automatically started off. Maybe I need to play the simulation with Jupiter there, just so they orbit Jupiter first, then replace um, that. So let's just, uh, yeah, replace Earth. So we're going to go Jupiter. Right, then this time I'm going to, yeah, slow down time as well. We're going to add the moons to Jupiter first again. So I like that. And then I'm going to press play and pause. So there you go. Right, so Jupiter now has... Yeah, they've now locked onto Jupiter. So then I'm going to replace Jupiter with the Earth. And we're going to see if we get the same um, scenario or if they actually, if Earth actually does cope with some of these. So, play. Uh, wait, let me, let me play. No, it looks like we get the same situation as before. Okay, so, looks like none of these moons will uh, want to orbit the Earth for some reason. So, if we just uh, run the simulation there. They all break away by the looks of it. Every single one of them. So Earth doesn't get anything out of that. And they all, every single one, breaks away from the Earth. So you can see every single moon of Jupiter is now orbiting the Sun. So that is a huge sort of belt of like asteroids almost. Um, a lot of them are just asteroids. All just going around uh, the Earth there. So, or going around the Sun I should say. So pretty crazy experiment so none of the moons of jupiter wanted to cooperate with the earth so what we're going to do is as well so we've done that um situation so we're going to do the same experiment again so we're going to try experiment number three and we're going to manually try and intervene the moons of jupiter so mainly the four galilea moons i want to see what they can do so we're going to slow all the way down to earth again replace it same situation so we're going to replace it with jupiter so let's go jupiter yep okay and then here we go. So Jupiter, we have now got... Yeah, add the moons. Uh, add moons, yeah. And then we need to replace with the Earth again. So, like that. Okay, now, I'm going to slow down time to pretty much nothing. I'm going to press play. Okay, right, now I'm going to see. Do any of these... So if I manually press auto-orbit, will they orbit Earth? Let's see. Doesn't look like they will. No, it seems like the moons of Jupiter have just got a mind of their own and they will not orbit the Earth no matter what. So I'm guessing they are a little further out than the moon. So, auto orbit. And Callisto, auto orbit. I mean, they're just the main ones. But oh, surely these little moons here, surely these should orbit the Earth, right? Let's see. I mean, maybe? 
I mean, I've no idea, um, but we'll try all of these inner moons as well. And just see if Earth can pick up any of them whatsoever. It looks like, yeah, Earth's grabbed one there. So maybe the ones that are super close to the Earth, maybe they'll uh, work. So you can see yeah, a few of them are actually cooperating with the Earth. So obviously these are all the moons that are really close to Jupiter. They're closer than the orbit of Io, so they're the ones that are very, very close. So Io is in theory the closest one that could work. Um, and also I'm just going to try adding the moon as well. So you can see the moon would sit here. So Io is, I mean, roughly this in, the roughly the distance of the moon from, from Earth. So Io is roughly the same distance from Jupiter that the moon is from Earth. So in theory, Io should be able to hang on here. So... Yeah, that's pretty bizarre, but we'll just delete the moon because we don't want to upset the experiment. So now we're going to click play. Right, orbits. Oh! Okay. So it looks like a bit of manual interference is the way to go. Okay, so... I mean, we'll try just orbiting like this sort of moon here, for instance, but I think this I think this is way too far away from the Earth to really... Yeah, there's no way anything further out than Callisto is going to work. So, okay. So this is what um, we get now. So what I'm going to do as well, I'm just going to recolor. Um, just so we can spot them a little easier. So I've got uh, Io there, Europa. We'll go with blue because it's got a lot of water on it. So there you go. Uh, Ganymede. We'll put that in, um, I guess we'll put that in orange. And then Callisto, uh, what colour are you? Um, we'll just put you in a, another shade of orange. Okay. Interesting. Right, so as you can see now, the moons of Jupiter. Actually, all, uh, Io, Europa, Callisto are all lined up as well. Look at that. So the Io, Europa, and Callisto in the background. Okay, so let's see how this experiment runs. So we can see that Callisto's kind of set up a binary orbit with the Earth, which is interesting, because Ganymede actually has more mass than Callisto. So, okay. Right, so let's actually run this and see how this functions. Will it upset the orbit of the Earth, I wonder, with all these moons here? Okay, so here we are. So we can see the other moons of Jupiter, they've just become asteroids around the Sun. So all of the major moons are actually hanging on to the Earth at the moment, but my guess is I don't think Earth has enough mass to really keep these moons in check, because obviously Io, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto are fairly large moons. I mean, the only one smaller than the moon is Europa. Io, Ganymede, Callisto are all larger than the moon. So we can see with uh, trying to run four different moons around Earth at the same time, or four major moons, that's going to cause some trouble. We could already see that there is issues going on here. Not looking good. And actually, one thing I want to try as well is Europa. Will it get any temperature from the sun? No, it doesn't. It still freezes. Okay. Oh, that was a shame. It would have been cool if Europa melted. Um, Io, how you doing? I mean, let's just put it to zero degrees. Just see if it gets any temperature from the sun at all. I mean, I don't think they really have any atmospheres to really keep any temperature. Oh, Callisto, there you go. So Callisto's already having problems with Ganymede um, presence there. So obviously no, no um, Jupiter here means that the moons have got more control over their orbits. Um, so obviously what Earth is obviously a lot significantly smaller than the mass of Jupiter. I mean, Jupiter is about 318 Earths, so this is a lot smaller, basically. So, obviously only having one Earth instead of 318 Earths, yeah, these moons can uh, cause their own trouble a little more often. So, we can see here that Ganymede already having weird orbits. Callisto has actually broken away from Earth and is now orbiting the Sun. So, in theory, Callisto would be a planet in this case, if it does actually break away. So, we'll uh, speed up time a little more. Okay, Callisto completely broken away from the Earth. That is now a proper planet around the Sun there. So, pretty cool. And that is now just going to orbit the Sun at its own um, free will there. So we'll just make it just make it a different colour so we can really spot it. So Ganymede is also broken away from the Earth. Again, large enough to be its own planet. So that is now another planet. So that would uh, add two more planets to the uh, solar system. So that would take us to a total of ten. So, yeah, Neptune, we've got uh, as obviously the eighth. Then we have nine and ten now with Callisto and Ganymede. So... Really cool. Right, and then Io and Europa. Maybe now Ganymede and Callisto have disappeared. Maybe these moons can function fairly all right. Because, I mean, we know Io is roughly the distance of the moon. Europa is obviously a lot further out than us. So maybe Euro I reckon Europa will break away. It looks like Io's up also upset. Whoa! Collision there. What was that? Did you just see that? What happened there? Oh. So we can see that um, Io, it collided with one of those small little moons. So one of these little asteroid moons here. It got picked up by Io's gravity, and it slammed straight into Io. So you can see here, let's uh, actually have a look at Io itself. Uh, let's lock onto it. There must be a collision mark. Oh my god, right. Very, very slow. The game is lagging like crazy. Apologies, everyone. That is not the record and software. That is the game. So, there must be some sort of collision mark on it. I mean, something happened there. Interesting. So we actually had a collision. I mean, that's perfectly possible, so let's press play, let that all fade around. We can see Io and Europa, there's definitely going to be some sort of interaction between the two. Their orbits are very, very close now. 
not looking good whatsoever. Europa could break away at any moment now. It is breaking away from the Earth's orbit, as you can see. So, pretty insane. We've got another one of Jupiter's far out moons there, just flying by there. This one here. That one in the corner, that's also flying by. So Europa has broken away from the... Yeah, I could tell that happening straight away from a mile off. So Europa is also now a planet around the sun. So that now takes us to, um, yeah, 11 planets. And uh, yeah, Io is the only one that has stayed around the Earth. And it makes sense, really, because Io is roughly the distance of the moon. So, I mean, it's a little larger than the moon, but I think the Earth can still hang on to him. So, pretty crazy stuff. Now, is there any collision mark? There must be some sort of... Nothing at all. Well, we definitely saw the moon was destroyed. So, something... It definitely hit it somewhere. But yeah, there you are. So, Io... Taking a massive bound pounding from something there. So... Pretty cool. So it actually engulfed one of the moons. So there we are. And then uh, back to closer to Earth. We still have these two dwarf moons here. And there's also one more further out as well. So let's uh, continue. Let's actually let time really progress now. Because I think Io... I think now all the other moons are gone. Io is going to perfectly orbit the Earth like anything else. I mean, that little other minor moon, I reckon that will break away. Judging by the orbit, I reckon that will leave. So then Earth will only have the two moons in the centre. And then Io. So three moons. Pretty cool. Anyways, back onto the actual... Uh, inner solar system itself as you can see there's a ton of objects obviously in the inner solar system now some of them are almost at the distance of mars um over there so we actually have dust storm mars in this version of the system but yeah there it is so pretty cool and that reminds me we need to do an update of the custom solar system because this version is out of date i mean this was update 27's updated system i think so we're in update 29 now so i think i need to update the custom solar system simulation a bit i think it is uh bit dated now so we do need to upgrade it with the, like the new cloud features and stuff because i would definitely like to recustomize some things so yeah stay tuned for that we're definitely gonna have to try that out anyways back onto the inner solar system here so um i don't know why venus is a minus 124 degrees that makes no sense <laughs> what's going on there venus you should be at like 400 plus there we go. i don't know why no idea why that's cooling down but obviously this is an old simulation from an old version of the game so it's probably uh the sun's temperature is probably bugged out so we need to probably start the new simulation completely fresh here and uh, work from there, honestly. So, anyway, so um, let's uh, move on as well. Right, so Callisto, how are you doing? So, minus 40 degrees. I mean, I reckon that will change. The sun's at luminosity of one. Yep. Okay. So, Venus. Yeah, no idea what that's cooling down. But, yeah, anyway, Venus isn't the focus of this video. So, let's just keep an eye on uh, the other Galilean moons. So, there's a massive, uh, obviously, load of stuff in the orbit of Earth now. Um, so, obviously, Earth could, in theory, have a collision with one of them further down the line as well. Because, I mean, it just takes Earth to get too close to one, and one of them just, just crash into it, and then uh, it could be a lot of trouble. So, there we are. Anyways, those guys are all perfectly fine. So, Earth now has three moons. We've got those two there, and then Io. So, they're the only ones. And then, obviously, um, back onto the rest of the system. Everything else has just become its own uh, object around the sun now. Maybe, maybe some of the minor moons will get picked up by Earth or Mars, or maybe even Venus at some point. But, obviously, the G Ganymede, Callisto, Europa... I don't see them having any um, interaction really with anything else. I think they're just too, they're large enough to just be their own things now around the sun. So yeah, in theory, they'll be their own planets for indefinitely, or they'll either have collisions with each other. So obviously, if you think about it, another planet in the orbit of Earth, eventually they're going to come together. And that's obviously what happened in the Theia theory, in the formation of the Earth and stuff, and the formation of the Earth and Moon, that was the Theia theory. So yeah, if there's other large objects in the orbit of Earth, eventually, after a long period of time, they could collide, and that is probably what will happen. So yeah, that will be um, pretty, pretty crazy stuff indeed. But yeah, there we go. So that pretty much does it for this experiment. So as you can see, everything's kind of just sorted itself out now. They're all just orbs in the sun um, as um, extra planets. So yeah, pretty cool. And then Earth itself, where even is Earth? Earth? Where's Earth gone? Oh, there it is. So then Earth has managed to keep control of Io. But yeah, other than that, anything further out than Callisto is all, all gone from the very beginning. So there it is. So Io, yeah, that's perfectly comfortable around the Earth. So pretty cool. So uh, looking at um, Earth from Io's perspective. Yeah, it's basically just like the Earth from the moon, really. So pretty cool. So imagine having Io as our moon. That could be quite cool because you'd in theory see if it was still erupting volcanoes because remember it is quite active but that's only because it's so close to jupiter if it was a little further away from jupiter or not around jupiter at all it probably would be a lot more dormant with its uh geological activity which could be quite interesting but yeah there you are so that is a cool sort of view of the earth from io so there you go so that pretty much replaces the moon which is which is quite cool in this scenario so yeah nice but yeah anyways guys that does it for what if jupiter's moons we're orbiting the Earth. So, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And, yeah, should we try it with, like, Saturn's moons, Uranus, Neptune? We could probably do it with all of the gas giants, actually. 
So, I mean, I reckon Uranus's ones could be quite interesting because they're obviously a lot closer than, say, Io is. So, would Earth be able to hang on to them more? And they're less massive. So, that could be quite an interesting one. But, um, yeah, Saturn's moons as well. Obviously, you've got Mimus and Celadus there fairly close. So, we could see some interesting stuff with those experiments as well. So, let me know if you guys would like to see those down below in the comments. And, yeah, if that all said and done, guys, make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.